meetings this past weekend of the International Monetary Fund and the G7 don't appear to have achieved any sort of truce in the escalating currency wars. And ahead of those meetings, jobs data out of the U.S. came in worse than expected, leading to more dollar weakness and the growing likelihood of quantitative easing. Joining us with her views on all of this is Marina Willemse, economist at The Efficient Group. Marina, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, you know, you look across the newspapers this morning and everyone says, well, you know, it was really expected that they would not really come up with anything uh, tangible, the IMF and the World Bank. We know that the IMF uh, uh, um, President uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was talking about some kind of mechanism to put in place with all these countries to take account of the effects that one has on each other. Do you think that's the way forward? Well, it's not really believable in other countries. Nobody really uh, got any support from that notion. So I think um, perhaps it's just a lot of talk. Um, and I don't really know if the World Bank or the IMF can really make a difference. No, I mean, is there anything on a global level you think that we can do or countries can do? And I know the RG20 meetings coming up and it's going to be on, on the agenda again at those meetings. Is there anything you can do on a coordinated uh, level globally to try and manage these depreciations or appreciations? There is definitely something you can do. It's about the willingness to really do that. Uh, politically, this, it's just a war. It's not really a currency war. It's a political war at this stage um, coming from economic stuff like currencies. And I think um, that is really the biggest problem is the fact that we've got two countries, two major economies, America and China, really not sitting at the same table. And I don't know if they will soon. It's interesting because the U.S. is saying that because of uh, the very um, balanced yuan uh, that it's creating a lot of imbalances and then the Chinese government is saying well all this extra quantitative easing and all this hot money that's flowing into the markets is destabilizing emerging markets. Yeah then you have Brazil saying well we're sitting right in the middle of all this. Exactly. And South Africa as well. And, and South Africa as well. So what is the way forward because it seems yes we've got a currency war but it all really emanates from the US and from China. I don't really see a very quick solution about this because um, what is really tr happening now is America is printing money and buying their bonds and going and continuing their quantitative easing and they're not say, so they're not, not giving any signals that they will be able to stop this soon or will c try to stop this soon. They will do this. They would not allow any banks to fall down. And um, if, that, if this continues, what will happen is they're going to still keep on doing fiscal and monetary easing and um, other interest rates in other countries will be higher and money will be flowing into those countries in the future and cu currencies will become stronger. And I, I, I really don't see how, I think the only thing America could do is really to allow the economy to go through a bit of a slump by not stimulating the economy so much and slowly getting out of their debt, but that might hurt the global economy as well. So it's really a catch, catch three two at this stage. Of course, we've seen a number of emerging market currencies taking move measures um, such as Brazil and that tax on short-term capital inflows. Uh, we know there's been some relaxation of exchange controls in other countries. South Africa so far, though, just a bystander in this process. Do you think we, we will do something? Do you think we should do something? Whether we should do something or not, a um, bit divided. I think um, if you interfere into the market, you will get some um, other effects be, uh, because of that. Uh, that might not, you, do, you do, don't really want those effects. Um, but I think they might do something. Um, only if, if only they're going to lower the interest rates, that might be one thing. Um, but I think maybe in the medium term policy statement that we will see later on this in this month, we might see something about this. It's quite interesting to see that during the crisis, we're talking about coordinated moves by all major economies to work together to get through this crisis. And now it seems that many people are, are embarking on this sort of protectionist view. And you're saying, you know, obviously South Africa is stuck in the middle of all of this and whether we will be intervening or not, there's not really much that we can do apart from lowering our interest rates. We do know, however, that the US is very vehement on deflating its way out of this recession as well, the one that was passed and all the debt that they've accumulated because of this. Um, you know, again, just looking at how it could play out for the likes of South Africa and how much longer we could see RAND strength fall. Well, I think um, as the, if things goes on like it does now at the moment, um, the American economy will keep on uh, doing quantitative easing. That would definitely lead to more money flowing into this country. A warning though for us is that if this continues, uh, the possibility of a lot of money accumulating into, into this country, liquidity being a very, very valid topic, if, if money is very easily, if it can be easily drawn out, out of this country, we could see a boom of our currency and um, it exploding quite the opposite way. So in other words, a bubble? Yes, for sure. I think there's definitely a lot of bubbles in the economy, like uh, contradicting what the IMF said. Um, and um, it, it depends. I think at this point in time, everything is very uncertain. Everybody is reacting on small little effects in the economy and it's causing big issues. And one day we might see the Dow Jones improving so well and the next day we might see it fall. And that's just because of the uncertain environment we are in today.
Well, you mentioned possible further interest rate cuts, and of course we do have the Reserve Bank meet again next, next month. And do you think 50 basis points would do it? Do you think they should really go with a, a big bang approach and maybe cut by at least 100 basis points to try and weaken the rand? I think the biggest, the, the, the worst thing that could happen at this point in time is something that the monetary policy do that we don't expect. Um, and 100 basis point cuts, I don't think we really expect that. 50 basis points, very likely. I don't know if the effect of that would be something that would weaken the rand. I really don't think so. But the, the basic thing is that the interest, uh, um, inflation levels are at such a low point that it does allow for another 50 basis point cut. Whether that will have an effect on the rand, I don't think so. Well, you know, in, in the scope of all of this, we've got the manufacturing sector coming under pressure because of the very strong rand. We've got various parts of the economy coming under pressure. Should we just take this as the new normal for many emerging markets and, and the new South Africa? And become more productive, perhaps. And, or perhaps, you know, focus on other things. And it is something that we have spoken about, so we know productivity needs to be increased. But at the end of the day, perhaps we should just uh, focus on the fact that we are going to be seeing a rand below 7 rand to the dollar for some time. I think you've got a point there. I think we must try and see the facts as they are, looking globally. Um, things are so uncertain. You can't say when something would happen, when um, America's data will be continuously good so that markets will start reacting towards that. And we should actually take the situation as is, with a strong rand, and try and make the best of it. Mm. And Marina, we're getting manufacturing numbers out tomorrow, in fact. Uh, and of course, this is for September, so it's post-World uh, Cup. Um, I think there might have been a li little bit of a fillip ahead of the World Cup. We also have retail sales on Wednesday. Do you think that the World Cup is out of these numbers and we're going to see South African economy as it really stands at this point? Yes, I think the World Cup issue should be behind us now. Um, and um, perhaps uh, we might see extra production from there, cause from there. But I, I don't think there's real uh, demand created from the World Cup in terms of our manufacturing and our, our um, wholesale and our mining and um, retail. But um, I do think figures that we might see is around the 7-8% level and might continue in, um, like that for the, until the rest of the year. Um, but positive numbers, um, but not numbers that would really make a change on the current economic environment. Well, Marina, also looking at the most recent PMI uh, numbers and the ISM numbers out on a global level, we're starting to see things look slightly better. Again, you're alluding to perhaps uh, things looking slightly, uh, we're getting into bubble territory. Uh, double dip still seems to be something that many people are talking about. But on the other end, if we do see more quantitative easing, this is perhaps going to do away with that argument. Uh, how do you see things playing out in 2011, 2012, given the fact we've only got around two months left, uh, three months left until the end yeah. of the year? It's incredible. I, I do think that uh, America will continue quantitative easing, so that would cause them not to go into a bit of a, it wouldn't, wouldn't it really cause them to have excessive growth in the next few years. And so we might linger on in the same way we are now. I think the real problem is, um, is it, it's shock that we don't expect. I, I don't really expect the bank to fall over anymore. We know that the ECB or somebody would just save those institutions. Um, but another type of shock that we might not expect, uh, maybe something China does or something like that. Um, and that kind of shock will obviously have global effects.